Hi, this is Rev with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to talk to you about the counterweight measurement strategy. A friend of mine recently went, met with Facebook, and they were talking about their testing and optimization program, and they described this strategy that they use, which is the counterweight measurement strategy. Most of the best optimization companies in the world use this testing strategy to make sure they don't do the wrong thing with their testing efforts, and to make sure they get more conversions with the testing that they are doing. To introduce the counterweight measurement strategy to you, I want to begin by telling you the story of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, as you know, isn't straight, it leans. The original construction of this tower was in the 1100s, and it was built over the course of 200 years. But during those early years between when it was started and there was a war, so I had to stop, and so then they start again, during that time, this, the foundation for the tower started to settle. As it settled, the tower started to lean. By the year 1990, the tower was leaning 5.5 degrees from the perpendicular, the most it had ever been leaning, and it was still moving. And they knew that if they didn't do something, that the tower would eventually tip over. So what they did is they closed the tower to visitors, and they siphoned out the dirt from beneath it so they could put a better foundation in. And then they did something very important. They put a bunch of counterweights on the north end of the tower to keep it from leaning. Those counterweights were part of the reason the tower still stands today, because the counterweight was able to keep it from, from falling over. As testers, we need to use the counterweight measurement strategy to make sure that we don't do what the Leaning Tower of Pisa was, where we lean so far that eventually we tip over. In our zeal to optimize to our primary metric, we often get so focused on optimizing that metric, and whatever it is for your business, you know, if you're a retail company, it's revenue per visitor. If you're a lead gen company, you want more leads. If you're a content site, you want more consumption or more page views if you're trying to do advertising on your content site. Whatever your primary metric is, in our zeal to reach that metric and to make more money as a business, there have been, I've seen companies that will lean too far towards that primary metric. And unfortunately, by focusing only on the primary metric, it can lead companies to be an overextension where they are leaning too far in one direction and they forget to use the counterweight measurement strategy to balance their efforts to make sure they're not hurting the business in the long term. I've said it before, but we're not conversionary optimizers, we're experience optimizers. And part of optimizing the experience is to make sure that you're not doing things in the short term that are detrimental in the long term. The counterweight measurement strategy is your safeguard against this. So depending on your site or your test, your counterweight metric will change. But the point of it is to make sure that you have that gut check, to make sure that you're not optimizing too far in one direction, and to make sure that you are getting results that are good in the long term. It's more of a holistic approach to make sure you're not paying Peter at the expense of Paul. So let me give you a few examples to help illustrate what this might look like. In the car sales world, you've got the aggressive salesman. And this aggressive salesman may get the sale. They may have great numbers, and they do it because of works. But in the long term, that reputation can hurt the business, can hurt the, the dealership. And so while the car salesman, or if I compare it to the individual test, might be getting the metrics that the business wants, in the long term, if it's done incorrectly, it can hurt the overall business and the long-term success of the business. The aggressive car salesman may get the sell, but it can leave the reputation of the, the dealership at risk. An individual test, while it might win with the primary metric, if it doesn't look holistically at how it's affecting the rest of the site, it could be detrimental in the long-term as well. So suppose you're trying to increase your click-throughs on, on your homepage with a homepage test. If you t run the test and you have an experience that increases click-throughs, but it hurts your other metrics, you have to stop and ask yourself, how valuable is that increase in click-throughs and is it worth sacrificing these other metrics in the long term? Those other metrics are your counterweights. They help you not only to evaluate the success of the primary metric, they help you make sure that you're not doing something in the long term that will hurt your, hurt your business. So how do you create a counterweight metric? The first thing you want to consider is globally, if there are site metrics that are not your primary metric, but there are good secondary metrics that can be used to compare the overall success. I want to give you another example. I work with one client and their primary metric is lead generation. They want to get more people filling out the forms because that's their success measure. But they also realize that while that's their primary metric, they are inherently an education or nurturing business. They know that to get more leads, they have to nurture and educate those people coming into the site. And so if they neglect the nurturing of leads, then in the long term, they will get fewer leads. So that's a good counterweight measurement. While you may call it a secondary success measure, or a secondary metric, but the counterweight to the leads for them is making sure that they are nurturing. And so they're looking at other metrics like their, their engagement score or their content velocity. 
they're looking at other metrics to help them evaluate if they are increasing the primary metric leads and they're not doing it at the expense of their overall site longevity. So that's what it might look like if you're looking for a site-wide counterweight measurement. You also need to look at this on a test level. While every test should have a primary metric, you want to make sure that there are, each test is looking at these counterweight metrics to make sure that you are getting a balanced approach that will help your site in the long term. So in summary, I want to encourage you to use this counterweight measurement strategy to make sure that you are not over-optimizing your site, to make sure that you're not optimizing one metric at the expense of your long-term success. You can look at this counterweight measurement as a site global metric. You can also look at it on test specific metrics. And whatever you do, you make sure that you're having this counterweight so that you don't, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, go neglected and eventually tip over because you became top heavy and you neglected the important foundation of making sure that your long-term success is taken care of and in check. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. Give me that thumbs up so I know that you liked it. You can also visit me at testingtheory.com where you can learn more testing strategies just like this to help you get more conversions and improve your testing.